I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 18th of February, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua, and today I'm out for a walk on the west side of Leon in Sutiava, exploring some different areas and just getting some exercise. We're going to be talking a little bit about roads today. We're going to jump right into today's topic because otherwise I'm just working on videos and, and getting some exercise today until later because I'm filming this on the day of and uh, there's three basic types of roads you're going to find in Nicaragua and this came up so one is dirt roads you're all familiar with dirt roads I don't really need to explain this but I will show Nicaragua dirt roads right now this is a pretty typical well-maintained dirt road this is a real road that goes from the highway which is right there uh, you can see this is Nicaragua 14 that I'm just off of and this is a well-maintained dirt road this is a very common well maintained style of road for when you are uh, traveling to smaller communities a little bit more off the beaten path but these are all over very easy to drive there are rougher ones of course there's narrower ones you've seen me walk on some really tiny places uh, but this is extremely common and uh, this is a lot of what people picture when you're thinking of Nicaragua this is kind of a funny topic right let's talk about the types of roads people have because who but but Surprisingly, people have a lot of questions for me about the roads that I walk on. So I want to show some of these and this I'm just I'm exploring a little community right now and it happens to be on a dirt road. This one is very wide and well maintained. This is a really nice little dirt road. It's also pretty flat. Uh, but these really are all over and if you want to really get into Nicaragua you really want to see things and explore things you're going to want to be on roads like this quite often because the most interesting stuff is down these but not very likely your restaurants your hotels but but a, a fair amount of the time you've got to get off of the regular path because surprisingly Nicaraguans have no surprisingly I don't know surprisingly to an American uh Nicaraguans have no problem going to places that seem completely non-touristy for themselves when they are going to go look for hotels they don't have the same look for a tourist location in the way that americans do and i think part of that is because travel with nicaraguans tends to be much more oriented around family and family events and much less around going to see tourist attractions. Uh, some of that does exist, of course, and places like Selva Negra in, uh, in Matagalpa is constantly busy with Nicaraguan traffic. That is a place that foreigners almost never go. Well, a fair number do, but tons of locals go to. Nicaraguans love going there. It's one of their favorite destinations, uh, and foreigners, expats, are often like, why? What's, what's special about that? Now, I want to notice this, notice this dirt path. I want you to, to notice this dirt path that I just came down is so remarkable moat you're coming down this place that's like that's just a little dirt you wouldn't even notice it as you come down the road and when you get down here there's some really nice modern houses hidden this was clearly a development that was getting started at one point and people are living here here's a really cute dog and uh i'm gonna show some of these look how beautiful house beautiful uh lawns and everything hola buenos dias and uh, you can see this is clearly an allotment that has not been developed yet. But, uh, and then food delivery just went by. I think that's Padita's jaw. Oh, this dog is hilarious. He's really excited. There's a person, there's never people. So there's not very much on this particular road. I'm just out exploring. I had seen some stuff on a map and wanted to see where this went. Because when looking on the map, you see this road, and they show a little bit more than is actually here. But that there are two modern development houses hidden back here is really interesting. And of course, this is this is just both good and bad, but there was this huge push for new developments here in Nicaragua coming up on 2017 uh, or coming up on 2018, and then that really rapidly fell away. And so a lot of these new lotifications cropped up and some really interesting stuff started to get built and people started to move in and the first few houses went in and then a lot of the expats left and so this is cool okay so this is i knew this was back here and i was not quite sure where it was this is twin engine coffee and they're inside this villa millaret which is unclear so this is twin engines building here and then that's the coffee roasters there very interesting so that's where it is i've seen them on the map a number of times and been like where is it because it's so close and off the main road 
you never really see it. And this is what looks like an entire development going on behind me uh, with Twin Engine Coffee in there as well. All right, we're going to head on to some suburbs in uh, Western Leon and uh, explore from there. So we're talking about types of roads and some people have asked me, well, why is there no asphalt in Nicaragua? And I want to show, this is the highway. Now, this one's Nicaragua 14, not the biggest highway. This is the highway running from Leon to Ponaloya and the beaches, but you will notice it is clearly asphalt. So that's important to note. We have asphalt here, the same as you would have anywhere else. It's just in certain places. And we're going to show some other roads and then we'll discuss why you have asphalt in some places and why not, and why it's not very popular here, because that's the real thing. Coming from the United States or Canada, it's asphalt almost everywhere, and here, obviously not that much. Everywhere has dirt roads, but the difference between here and everywhere else is how many pavers there are. So let's go look at those. All right, on today's walk, I'm heading into North Sutiava into an area I've not been really to before. The wall behind me is the Colegio Calasan. So if you're looking on a map, I'm heading north. That's the north wall of the school. We're heading into Colonia Paulino Ramon Guevara Fuentes. Yes, I'm reading that because that was hard to do. I had to look that up on the Colonia marker sign. Uh, but a lot of the colonias here are actually markered uh, because many of them are named after uh, heroes or martyrs who fell during the revolution uh, from these different neighborhoods. I'm going to spin the camera around because this is a beautiful little community and very hidden, not in a spot that you would expect to find, and uh, a bit of traffic. And this is on a road that you never really notice. It's one of those just hidden roads. A lot of these houses are kind of on a diagonal, which is interesting. There's a little bit of hilliness here. This place is advertising a baby disco, a mobile baby disco. Now that's just probably no longer in business. A lot of businesses along here. That place does copies. Here's a place that does cold drinks and stuff. Interesting. All very interesting. Not, not what I was expecting to find on this back road. Not at all. Here's a Commodore. Buenas tardes. This is a cute little community. Now we're right behind uh, the, the private school that's very, very famous here. And we are uh, to the side of the University of Asaje. And this is a cute little road up here. Okay, we got to take this little road, at least just a little bit to see what this road looks like. This house on the corner. Oh, super cute. Look at this design. Fantastic. Who would have guessed that this little road was hidden in North Sutiava? Buenas tardes. All right. Little well, pulpery is everywhere, of course. Now, what we're looking at here, this is, to the best of my knowledge, this is the Sutiava Hospital. I knew this was back here and wanted to see it. That's specifically why I came back here, uh, sort of. I mean, we're on our way places, but. This is a very small hospital, but uh, Leon has its own normal hospital plus a private hospital. Funny enough, I am recording this completely by coincidence on the day that I'm heading to a party at the owner of the private hospitals for his birthday. Uh, so I'll be doing that later. And uh, what cute little streets, so quiet, but like so much life, like there's people everywhere. Okay, one, these roads go down, which a lot of the roads up here, if you've seen my other barrio wanderings up here, uh, they tend to go all over the place. And this cute house on the corner, I love these colors, all these people out for a stroll. All right, I'm gonna check a map before I get lost, because uh, I'm trying to explore to a reparto that we've never been to before, uh, and I wanna get a look at what that looks like. But this is North Sutiava on the extreme west end. So, uh, a whole area we've not explored before and really interesting um, and definitely an area where you don't get expats ever not not living here not renting here not wandering through uh, so this is this makes it extra interesting all right so we've talked about asphalt and dirt roads and here we have a great example of pavers here i'm filming this in north sutiava but you see these go on all over the place and you see me here i'll wave to myself right there in the shadows and uh buenas tardes and here, now this road is on a bit of an incline and that's worth noting that we're here on pavers. So these are deep bricks, at least this deep, like, I don't know what that is, five inches maybe. Uh, and they interlock just a little bit and they're put in by hand. 
And pavers are really interesting uh, because you don't see these really in the United States and in North America and not very much. You see them some in Europe. Um, they are really popular in, in certain places. And that's why I wanted to talk because a lot of people see these on the video and uh, they're really interested in why do they do that? Why don't they pave uh, like we do in the United States? All right, uh, we're, I just found this interesting ultrasound. It completely distracted me how high this wall is above me and advertising ultrasounds. <laughs> Very funny. All right, so the real question is, why are pavers important? Why don't we use asphalt? Why do we have both? When, like what, what actually makes that make sense? All right, so we're heading north in North Sutiava, and we're in this deep cavern feeling spot. It's very funny. Like obviously you get these stone walls that they dug down, the road comes down and the houses are a floor above. This one has like a basement under it. How cool must that be? And like, this is not a style of house that you find in very much of this area. And we just went into a dirt road, but we're heading into the Reparto Belen. And I've never been to Belen before. This is a Reparto. So it is technically part of the larger Sutiava area, but it is not part of the Barrio Sutiava. Uh, Northern Sutiava, which is, so it's very difficult to explain. Uh, Sutiava is a region like Leon, uh, and it is full of its own sub areas. One of those sub areas being the very well-known Barrio Sutiava. Uh, but this is, uh, Reparto Belen. And so we are in a different area. Buenas tardes. Uh, all together. It's completely different roads, completely different feel. Everything is different than where we just left, which is the Colonia Fuente, I believe. This isn't the best, best terrain for my feet, but they're doing okay. They're not too bad. Oh, the cute flower pots. What an interesting space obviously the water just pours down the one side of the and i'm going to air quotes road here so the map showed that the road i was on i should take to the very end but it's going farther than i thought it was going to go so this is listed as a reparto as we discussed on the show previously reparto is like barrio and we're going to see what's up beyond this barrier here this is Sometimes in the middle of the city, you'll actually get tiny plantain plantations. I don't know if plantation is the right word given how small it is, but it's plantains, so plantation may always be uh, appropriate. Please do not dump the trash. And uh, so repartos are like barrios, but they're suburban rather than urban. So we left the barrio Sutiava, which is urban, and now we're out into kind of the country, hence the term reparto. Yeah, this road is definitely going a bit farther than we were expecting it to. So I'm going to take a left coming right up here and head deeper into, because I'm supposedly on the edge of the Reparto, and that music's really loud. All right, according to Google Maps, none of the roads that I'm standing on exist. The one behind me doesn't exist. This one doesn't exist. And uh, yeah, so uh, according to Google, we're, uh, we're gone. So if we were to take the road behind me, directly behind me, we'd be heading into the Villa Democracia, which we have shown a little bit of on the show previously, but it's been quite a while. Now we've got a place over here that has, uh, this is a, a liquor joint here on the left. And uh, well, let's just turn you around. No reason to be looking at me. I mean, the sun's kind of in our face going this way, but this gives you a feel for this little reparto. I like, the, I love this, these plants and this finish on this house. Like this, this is just my example of what it's are they? Every random thing is mixed in everywhere. Oh, there's in between. You can kind of see what it's like in between everything. Lots of cute houses along here. So a lot of these repartos, even though you get very dirt roads, very little infrastructure, you have a lot of, what is are they? And a church right here. You actually get a lot of potentially nice places to live. A lot of these nice houses are just hidden back in these communities, which is so much fun to explore. Here we are into what seems to be, from the best I can tell, right there this. This is the main street 
of Belen, if anything can be considered such. We have a cool, cool two-story over there. So we're paved for a little bit. We have a clothing shop on the left. And at the north side, this is cute. They sell chocolate-covered bananas. Oh, yeah. I'm not actually a big chocolate-covered banana guy. I mean, sometimes they're good. Here you can get a good look at the pavers and see how deep they are. As you go north in pretty much any part of Leon, the, the roads start to descend heavily and then eventually run into the river. Uh, and so that tends to be the edge of town almost anywhere is that it's just gonna go down and down until you hit the ravines and then that's the end of it. So the city tends to peter out in, in pretty much every direction in every far-flung suburb by running into the Northern River on the north side. On the south side, you tend to run into mountains, uh, but the same general effect. I'm not gonna walk all the way down there. I think it's gonna turn into a dirt path and go down to the river. So we're gonna continue exploring in some completely different directions. All right, we're gonna walk down another of the main streets in Belen. I think this is, I think it's really only two main streets and uh, go through all the beautiful colorful houses here. In uh, this is the Western part. We just did the Eastern part of the Reparto. Now we're coming down the Western part. I'm gonna turn this real slowly. Got some really cute houses and a few that could use some work. This orangey red one. Wow, I love that color. That is fantastic. So pavers, why do you use pavers? Well. So asphalt, let's talk about why asphalt, because that really explains a lot of things. Asphalt is really, really good when you're dealing with temperatures that are not too high, because it will liquefy, and you're dealing with terrain that is relatively flat, because it will slide. Buenas tardes. <clears throat> and, uh, and you have big machinery to put it down. It takes big projects, not big, but it requires machinery and projects and teams and engineering to lay down asphalt. And it's certainly doable, and we do it here in Nicaragua. And its goal, the, the thing that makes asphalt so nice, is that it's really good for high speed travel. When you're dealing with highways and super highways especially, speeds in excess of 45 miles an hour, asphalt is really good because it can be made incredibly smooth. Hello little puppy. Oh, he's like, what are you doing? I didn't say you could film me. Those are really big pavers right there. And, uh, whew, sorry for the wind. Hopefully it's not too terrible. Oh, it's blowing dust in my eyes. I had to pick the windiest possible day to come out for a walk. What an interesting house this is. Two stories right on the road. Very, very narrow. Oh, look, there's actually kind of a dark sky going on. I mean, there could be rain. We had a little bit of rain the other day, but very, very little. This is cute and interesting. You're cute and interesting too. Yes, you are, hi. So uh, asphalt's really good in those particular situations. And when you're in the United States, those situations exist almost all the time. The terrain is generally flat. Cars wanna go really fast. You have big equipment. It's not that hot for the most part. So the United States tends towards using asphalt almost everywhere because it simply makes a lot of sense. Pavers play a different role. Pavers are good for when you so they're much more expensive as far as i know to put in initially maybe not much more expensive more expensive to put in initially you have to buy them pre-made but they can be pre-made somewhere else and hauled in any way you like you can bring them in on bicycles you can bring them in by hand you can bring them in on horse-drawn cart you can bring them in with a truck so you're able to put in pavers in places where putting in asphalt would be incredibly difficult. Pavers are not so good for high-speed travel. They're fine, especially roads like the one I'm walking on. You could do 45 miles an hour on this. You could do 55 miles an hour on this without problem. But if one was to come loose, wow, would that be terrible. So pavers tend to be used in spots where you're having slightly slower overall traffic. There's a nice little open spot in the middle of the Reparto. We're heading back into Sutiava pretty quickly here. And uh, pavers, however, do not require heavy equipment or big planning. They can be put in by hand, even with just a single person and a shovel. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Hola, hola. <laughs> so pavers are 
are really good for putting into ad hoc situations where you need to put them in places where it's more difficult to put asphalt and where you don't need to drive as fast. Pavers are also very good for high temperature situations. They are not affected by the heat. You can have months at a time with more than 110 degrees and pavers will not be affected. Pavers also last effectively forever. They will shift and that is a problem, but they can be repaired by hand. Anybody can come out with a shovel, pick up the pavers, shift them around, uh, adjust what's under them, mostly sand, and put them back and they will be completely repaired. So you're able to, with minimal investment, buenas tardes. Uh, with minimal investment, you're able to replace pavers or repair pavers. And so a road that has been pavered is good potentially for generations and generations, whereas an asphalt-based road, buenas tardes, has an extremely limited lifespan and requires a big investment with big equipment to come in and repair or replace it. And repairs tend to be very poor in general. They're, they're fine for a little bit, but you really need to completely replace the roads on a regular basis. And that is extremely costly and difficult. Here in Nicaragua, we are faced with rough terrain uh, and very high temperatures all the time. This road just comes to an end. So we got to head to the left here and uh, oh, head uphill a little bit. But oh, we're, we are getting some darker clouds. I mean, maybe, if nothing else, we're gonna be overcast. Ooh, these stones with the kind of orangey red accent, very cute. A lot of cute little neighborhoods up here. I like Northwestern Leon. I'm consistently finding cute neighborhoods up here. Really hope that the Final Cut Pro is able to clean up this audio. Buenas tardes from all the wind. So because we tend to drive places slow and we have these conditions for road maintenance, it really makes, hello, it really makes pavers make an awful lot of sense here. But there's another factor. Asphalt is good when you have big machinery and high labor costs because you don't use as many people and you use big machines instead of a lot of people. With pavers, you really don't benefit from using machines. And that's not 100% true. Germany or the Netherlands or Denmark, somewhere over there, has some really interesting big equipment that's able to put in pavers really, really quickly. That's a big benefit to using pavers, even in situations where you would otherwise have used uh, asphalt. So that is changing a little bit as they're improving methods of automating pavers. This place is so cute with its beautiful flowers and little white picket fence. How interesting. Now we're back at the hospital. This is the road on the other side of the hospital, but we can just go through on the dirt, I think, and get to the other side. At least I think it's the hospital. Looks like the hospital to me. We're gonna find out. I'm exploring. This is, this is sort of a road. We just Nope, it doesn't go anywhere though. Just these houses. And then this is, yeah, there's the emergency entrance of the hospital. Now that's interesting. I'm glad we came by and got to see the emergency room and the outdoor waiting. So this is actually our local hospital uh, to where we live. So really good actually to know where it is. And I'm gonna walk right around it because that is the only path I have to get back because apparently it's all blocked off. Oh, again, sorry for this wind. This is a lot of wind. <clears throat> the, uh, uh, so, but in general, in general pavers benefit where labor is cheap because you're able to send any number of people out and do pavers and you can spread them out however it makes sense. You can do 100 roads with 100 people, each working on one very slowly. You can send 100 people to the same road and work on it very quickly. You can divvy up labor very, very simply. You don't need to have different skill sets and, and uh, send people out in teams if you don't want to, but when you want to, it works fine too. Now, we did notice when we were on Ometepe that people were putting in pavers, uh, which we will talk about, or did talk about on the Ometepe episode, which may have led you to this one, but uh, they had a team putting in the pavers and then a second set of people who were building the ditches on either side because the ditches were concrete and the, uh, and the pavers were pavers. So that's two different skill sets. That's slightly different, so worth noting, but that is a specific situation that is not necessarily required uh, where they are doing uh, those deep ditches. Just gonna grab a little bit of this road here, which is not one that we walked down earlier. We went up and went the other way 
uh, up there at the intersection. Had we turned left, when I was first showing this, this is where we would have ended up. The camera is definitely having some glitching issues, so I just wanted to look and see. So this is uh, uh, Reparto Juan Jose Alvarez. So we've gone to the west of Belen and found the Reparto of Alvarez. So we're gonna do some mapping right now. I'm gonna stand here for a second and try to bring up a map and show you where I am and try to determine where this Reparto actually goes, but clearly it goes down this way, which is where we just came from. Uh, and again, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Sorry, the battery died there, but it gave us a moment to show the map. I'm gonna turn the camera around again. This is the hospital. We are still right next to it. Actually, I'm going to throw this up just a little bit higher so you guys can get a better view than I'm getting from down here. Unfortunately, the wind noise isn't going to stop, but you can see a little bit of the hospital real quickly. You can see that was the orange house and the intersection that we came down just a few minutes ago. And here we are coming past the hospital. All right, we'll come back down to normal traveling levels. Boy, I like having this mixed use super extension uh, selfie stick for the GoPro. It's pretty nice. Thanks, Ulanzi. They didn't give it to me as a gift, but they did sell it to me, which is his part way there. Anyway, so yeah, here we're coming past the hospital and uh, very, very handy. And that is the back wall again of Calisans that we're looking at in front of us. The hot dog truck was not up here as we came by the first time. I don't think I would have noticed it. It's time for hot dogs around here in this neighborhood. So pavers, pavers make a lot more sense in places like Nicaragua for most of our roads. It allows us to have uh, roads in places that otherwise we just wouldn't be able to pave. It allows them to be repaired over time and maintained in much better ways. It's really, they're really excellent. I kind of want to eat at this Commodore. I wonder what they have. And, and for those of us out walking consistently, the, the paved road, the pavered roads are really, really nice. It, it really is something that in on videos, maybe it doesn't look that good, but when you live here, it doesn't take very much before you're like, oh, I just love pavers. They just make sense so much of the time and they make for great neighborhoods. Uh, and they, they take advantage of the existing labor market and available uh, materials. There's no need to bring in heated tar in order to make the asphalt. That's something that's very difficult. And pavers, honestly, are probably far better for the environment, partially because they last for so long, they don't require all the big machinery, they don't require the tar, they don't require the replacement. Uh, in energy terms, they're using much more human energy in the form of human labor and consumption of food crops in order to put them in and maintain them rather than petroleum products and so forth. So. We are now heading back. That was our walk for the day. Uh, this is uh, Calisans on the left. All of this, all the way down there, all of this wall is the Colegio, the high school, the private high school here. And then we are heading towards La Sage out to the west. Buenas tardes. Hola, buenas tardes. All right, not the longest barrio walk today, but I didn't have a lot of spare time. We're heading out to the beach tonight, like I said, uh, for a birthday party. And so I've got to, uh, got to get home and get ready so that I'm able to head out there. I've not had dinner yet. I'm not sure I had lunch yet, actually, now that I say it. And, uh, ooh, and I uh, uh, need to wrap up this walk, got to shower and do all that stuff. and got to start uploads because for some reason our uploads, our internet doesn't actually seem like it's slow. It's only the uploading on one link to, to GoPro for some reason has been really slow, but it's really impacting my workflow. So I've got to figure that out as well. And I get a couple different things edited and uploaded for you guys. So I've got a lot on my plate for the evening. And uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is about it. So hope you enjoyed the barrio walk. I'm gonna go up and see some of the other barrios in that area sometime soon. That was, and I gotta say right now, my foot doesn't feel the walk at all. Like I can tell it's still not my normal foot, but uh, today it's feeling really, really good. And I've done um, three and a third miles so far, uh, which is not a ton. That's only a third of the way that I walked to the beach or less, but it's a real walk. And uh, 
uh, feels really, really good. At this point, I would have been feeling it really hard a week ago. So uh, fingers crossed that we're showing improvement. I do gotta show, this just happened, I don't know when, but this tree just came down and took down this billboard thing that's been here. This is one of the, uh, the, the Hotel Mariposa. This sign has been here for forever. <coughs> and uh, now it's not here so much anymore. We'll see when that ever gets cleaned up because it's just kind of sitting there. I'm not exactly sure whose responsibility it is to deal with a tree that takes out an old abandoned sign. But the actual hotel is just up there. You can kind of see it in the distance. I've never been up there. I need to walk up there sometime soon and just show it just because it's another thing to show on the show. But uh, yeah, I'm glad we got to do the barrio walk. Those are some interesting spots that we stumbled on in the hospital. And uh, uh, there are some barrios and, or repartos, whatever, on either side of those uh, that are gonna be worth checking out as well. They'll probably be very similar, but everyone is unique. It's always a slightly different experience. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me, makes a huge difference. And uh, as always, post on social media, tell your friends about the show, get in the comments, talk about uh, where we've walked, questions you have, what is it like different places, how's my foot doing, all that stuff. Get down there and discuss. Our community is so interesting and vibrant and uh, always, always so much to talk about. And uh, this is Saturday, so tomorrow, I don't even know what's going on, but I'm ready to go party tonight and I will see all of you tomorrow.